Hey, uh, good evening, everyone, and hello. Uh, my name is Miriam St. Clair. I'm a first year intern, and uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about native shrubs that support wildlife well. Um, this is a very vast subject area, and so I've kind of narrowed it down and limited it to uh, shrubs that I have, native shrubs that I have in my own yard, because I know very well how they work and uh, any issues that might occur with them. Um, I have selected shrubs rather than trees for this presentation uh, because oftentimes we have space limitations and it's difficult to uh, have a towering oak as much as we would like to uh, in our yards. Um, because these are all natives, they're very undemanding, uh, very easy to grow. Sometimes they get a little out of hand. Uh, so I'm going to start with um, getting an understanding of what we want to do when we support a wildlife community. Um, in the case of these shrubs, we want to offer a diversity of shrubs. Diversity of shrubs is going to attract a diversity of wildlife, uh, birds, mammals, invertebrates, and you want to plant for all seasons to support anything, you know, any uh, animals or birds in your uh, garden uh, all year round because they, they continue to need support, not just in the summer. So if we start with spring and talk about um, the shrubs that I have, the one shrub I have that's a good spring shrub for supporting wildlife, um, and you want to look for shrubs that are going to produce insect attracting blooms. Uh, berries are not going to be up yet. Uh, so you want some blooms that pull in those insects and attract the returning migrants. And um, so any of the insect eating birds are going to be very interested in visiting the shrubs that have uh, these, you know, the bloom at this time. Um, you also want to have the beginning of pollinator support. So these types of shrubs will provide nectar for any any uh, of our of our pollinators, particularly bees. So the the shrub that I have in my yard that is just such a superior shrub is the high bush blueberry. Um, and it, it kind of meets all of these needs. It's also a valuable summer uh, shrub, as I'll, you know, my next slides will show. Now, the benefits of the high bush blueberry is that it attracts large numbers of specialist native bees. And it also, anytime a shrub or a flower supports a specialist native bee, it's also going to support generalist bees. So um, a specialist bee is a bee that has co-evolved with, uh, with this particular plant. And so they are necessary for each other uh, to, for, for this uh, bush to produce uh, berries in the summer. Now, these insects that are attracted to the highbush blueberry uh, are woodpeckers, bluebirds, sparrows, cardinals. Um, and we'll see that in the summer, this is a, a very beneficial shrub. So uh, it will support about 30 species of songbirds in the summer. So this is really uh, a superior shrub to have in your in your yard. And again, because it's a native, it's undemanding, uh, once it gets established, it's really good pretty much on its own. So in the summer, uh, the requirement for animals in the yard, in the garden, are sugar-filled fruits. Uh, Animals at this time period are nesting, they're raising young. Uh, they need a lot of energy. And again, as I mentioned before, the high bush blueberry uh, is, it fulfills that criteria. Um, the service berry, uh, the 
amelanchier canadens is also a really terrific shrub. Now it also exists as a tree. Uh, there are certain species, especially the canadens, that if they're kept nice and trim, uh, they'll assume a bush-like uh, appearance and structure. Uh, so the common elderberry, the Sambucus racemosa, that's the red-berried one. Um, and again, these are very, very beneficial. So if we look at a little more detail about the service berry, um, we can see that the uh, pollinators are going to visit the flowers of this shrub in the spring. Again, we have these two populations of bees that are supported uh, by the nectar of the service berry when it blooms. This uh, bush is also a larval host for several butterflies. Um, it has nice dense branching and structure, so it sometimes is used as a nesting site for robins and cardinals. Um, and then these very sweet berries are eaten by uh, birds and squirrels, chipmunks, and humans. These are just the most delicious berries. Um, you know, and I always try to grab a few. I planted these primarily for wildlife, so I don't look at them as something that I'm going to harvest. But it's always nice to have a few of these. These are really very tasty. And then the other benefit to people is that it has really stunningly beautiful fall foliage. So this is a really nice uh, all around, just very great, terrific shrub. Now the common elderberry uh, is pollinated uh, by native bees. They, they go for it. It's a great nectar plant. Um, and interestingly, it provides nesting material for native bees and hummingbirds. Um, and it also is, this is very important in the yards is that in gardens is that it uh, acts as a biological control site because it supports predator insects like aphids, lacewings, hoverflies, those types of things uh, that are so important in controlling other insects. Uh, it has nice dense foliage so it provides very nice shelter for birds and then again it just produces an abundance of berries for birds and mammals in the garden. Now in the fall, the requirements for birds and some, some of the mammals are for fat heavy fruits. Uh, this is in preparation for migration, uh, preparation for winter, and the two shrubs that I have that I really like are the silky dogwood and spice bush. And these have many benefits in the garden. Um, the silky dogwood, again, it is a host for the predatory insects, so it helps with biological control of pests. Uh, it's a larval host for several butterflies, and it supports specialist bees, and along with that it'll mm -hmm. support uh, the generalist type bees too. Um, it provides nesting sites uh, for several types of birds, um, has nice dense branches so it provides shelter and it has fall fruit for birds especially the migrants it's very important in supporting um, the spice bush is such a it's such a pretty bush it has very dense uh, soft leaves uh, they have a very pretty green color. Uh, rabbits and opossums will eat the leaves. Uh, it also functions as an important uh, butterfly larval host, the spice bush uh, swallowtail, the tiger swallowtail. Um, and it's very interesting, the, um, the larvae will roll up the leaves of the spice bush uh, in preparation, you know, for for the growth period um, before they, you know, before they uh, enter the, the butterfly stage. Um, it supports uh, honeybees early in the season and early native bees too.
Um, and again, the fall fruit is very important in supporting migratory birds. Now in the winter, there's not much around for the birds in terms of berries uh, or fruit. Um, typically, they don't eat the red chokeberry, black chokeberry, or winterberry uh, once the, once when they initially form fruit. Uh, now I've noticed this year my red chokeberries are not ripe yet. Uh, but the black ch chokeberries are, and I do see huge numbers of birds, particularly mockingbirds, catbirds, lots of chipmunks are up there eating these. So I, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it varies from year to year. The red chokeberry is uh, very popular uh, in the winter. Uh, the, deer, the deer will browse the red chokeberry. Um, but usually, according to what I've read and what I've witnessed some years, uh, this, this berry is pretty much left alone until late winter when they shrivel up, nothing else uh, is available for them to refuel with. So birds will eat this and so will mammals. Um, so these have other benefits uh, in the garden. Um, they function as intermediate food source for birds and mam mammals at interval period between the winter and the spring. Um, the chokeberries host the predator insects and they also provide nectar for bumblebees and native bees in the early spring. So they're not they're not without benefit. They're maybe not as beneficial as some of the other shrubs, but they are very nice to have uh, in the garden. They produce these very pretty berries. You can see in the picture there. Um, what is interesting about the uh, choke berries is that they are a source for humans of uh, antioxidants. Uh, they have the anthocyanin pigments um, that are that are very good ox antioxidants, and they're they're full of tannins, and they have a lot of vitamin C, and they're being studied uh, as nutritional support for humans. A lot of people already eat them. They are very astringent tasting. Um, so I've heard that a one to one ratio of berries to sugar, and you can you can kind of get them down. Now, the winter berry uh, is a very beautiful um, deciduous holly. Um, so it's very, very lovely in the winter because it retains the berries. The birds are not very interested in them when they first fruit. Um, but again, it is an intermediate food source for birds, again, in that interval between late winter and early spring. Uh, they are a larval host for several butterflies and they provide nectar for butter butterflies. So again, maybe uh, not as beneficial as some of the other shrubs, but certainly has a role uh, in the garden. So um, I try, I wanted to, I, I thought I only had 10 minutes for my presentation. Uh, so um, I'm pretty much finished with it. Um, I wanted to show you the sources that I used, uh, and many of you know these websites already and these, these resources for uh, finding out about native plants, um, but all of these were just great, and uh, um, I had a lot of fun finding the information out, looking up all of these things, uh, and I'm, I really like the Xerxes, the uh, invertebrate conservation group. They have lots and lots of information about supporting uh, the, the, the various invertebrates that live in our, our garden.